Rhea, it's great seeing you. Thank you so much for stopping by here at Pop Up Studio at Nor uh, Norway FinTech Festival. Great to be here. <laughs> it's great seeing you. And for those who have not had the pleasure of meeting you, please tell us briefly who you are and what you do. Yes, sure. I'm Rhea. I'm the CEO in Finance Innovation, uh, the Norwegian FinTech cluster here in Norway, based in beautiful, sunny Bergen. <laughs> Indeed, beautiful, sunny Bergen. Okay. Now, Rhea, uh, tell me a little bit about the the, eco, the fintech ecosystem in Norway. What's what's particular about it, and what should people know about how fintech is developing across the country? Well, the fintech ecosystem is pretty uh, well well uh, established actually in Norway. We've got the cluster that I represent, but also other ecosystems, both in Bergen, Oslo, and the other cities in Norway. Um, so a good combination of accelerators, incubators, and um, non-profit organizations like ourselves. So a lot of uh, different possibilities if you're a fintech company or established bank in Norway to uh, get connected, basically. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, uh, I guess you are aware that you recently were named as one of the uh, the, the fintech catalysts in 2024 by Stockholm FinTech. Yes. They <laughs> they did a list, a comprehensive list, where they yeah. selected the most influential people and perhaps the people that can open more doors for the ecosystem across the Nordics yes. and um, we're very keen to understand um, what is it from your perspective that that has really contributed towards helping the, the local ecosystem grow and develop mm -hmm. and accelerate in the way that it has? Yes, sure. I am. Well, to be honest, I think uh, obviously I'm speaking for my organization. Um, the fact that we're representing a cluster that has a mission to work with all the different stakeholders in the ecosystem perhaps uh, differentiates us from any other organizations, right? So we have an advantage that we're representing all of the ecosystem. So it could be the universities, the research centers, uh, the startups and corporates, right? Uh, and the pub public sector. So I think that's how we, we, at least myself, through my job, have been able to kind of work with the fintech ecosystem and to accelerate yeah. the, the collaboration in the ecosystem. Um, so I think um, the industry clusters in Norway, like ourselves, is kind of uh, an advantage uh, in Norway, I would say, because we represent not only fintech, we have a lot of clusters, right, within different sectors. So whether you're working in media prop tech or in the maritime sector, right, there are organizations like ourselves. So we're kind of working not only with fintech, but also other industries to collaborate as well. Okay. So I think that maybe, yeah, is kind of a contributor. Yes, uh, uh, pretty unique uh, probably as well. Yes, I think it's quite unique in uh, in Norway and in Europe actually to work this way. So so what would you say are perhaps the, the, the more specific challenges that Norwegian uh, companies face when trying to scale up or to be able yeah. to put their visions to life? Well, yes. So of course, uh, the regulation is a... Um, it's not a problem, but it's a challenge for many uh, small companies, right? We don't have, they don't have the, the, the kind of um, the employees or the systems to face the regulations or the um, workforce basically, right, to uh, work with that. But also finding potential collaboration um, through uh, connecting with corporates, investors and etc. I think that is a challenge for any startup, but um, maybe specifically in fintech as well, trying to find that corporate partner perhaps, which will make you succeed can be challenging and but that's where we come in and try to help right with our ecosystem and the cluster so i think that's one of the challenges but uh, i'm sure there are many more right right now let me ask you um uh, what would you say is your leadership leadership style and, uh, and, and 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 when you when you bring your experience and expertise to work how how does that contribute specifically to helping some of these companies overcome the challenges that they face i think um Personally, I'm, um, <laughs> I don't like to beat around the bush. Mm -hmm. I, I like to kind of cut to the chase, figure out what is it you want to do and uh, go with that. And it's like, I, I don't like to, um, I need to know what we're doing and then let's just do it instead of uh, just talking, talking, talking. So I think when I'm working either with the companies that we're working with or with uh, my own colleagues, we're always kind of working in that kind of manner. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, I think that's an advantage for, for me, but also the people around me, I would say, is what I've heard. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and might you be able to share some stories of uh, how this approach that you take towards helping nourish the ecosystem has, has helped some of the local companies maybe open doors or maybe yeah. overcome some of the regulatory challenges that they face? Um, well, I think um, when we're working with, for example, startups, right, they're really innovative, they have amazing ideas and etc. And they're super excited, right, to, you know, get started and they have, uh, they don't probably think about everything that they should be thinking about because they are in that phase that they just want to get things done, right, mm -hmm. which is totally understandable. But I think then 
with myself being like a person working with them, that's where we're kind of like, when we talk to each other, we're just trying to figure out like, that's great for you, but let's, how can we go from your idea to actually managing to do this, right? So uh, uh, I think the way that I'm working with them, uh, with the different companies, is just to figure out, you have an amazing idea, but let's try to be a bit realistic about how you go from A to B, right? right. Um, I think that's, um, like I was saying, I, I do like to cut to the chase. So I'm trying to be like, give them the realistic approach, try to kind of scope out what is, for example, if it's the corporate partner, they can be different as well, right? So mm -hmm. it's kind of, let's use time to understand the partners or the different incumbents that you perhaps want to work with. Mm -hmm. They're not all the same. Right. And they don't necessarily think the same. So how do we spend time doing that other, and not just run around and like, that's pitch, pitch, pitch. Right. Um, so I see a lot of startups, for example, going to pitching com competitions and they're like going out there talking at every different stage possible, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. But let's use time on actually developing the stuff and find other ways to kind of find your partners instead of standing on stage. That's like... That's my best tip for the companies we work with. Right. And I think not every founder likes to hear that, right? Because they're in that phase that they want to show off their product and uh, uh, what they're capable of. But I think there's so many ways of doing that, right? So I'm trying to kind of show, <laughs> show them, I guess, yeah. um, or make them understand that there are so many other ways of selling your product mm. or getting uh, partners or investors other than doing that. So if, if you were to advise the leader of another ecosystem, perhaps outside the region, of mm. what is the one thing that, that you would like to tell them, like, focus on this, this will really make a huge difference in the way that you contribute to the ecosystem. What would that be? I think it's to be open and to listen and not necessarily um, be fast to judge an idea or, for example, a founder. Um, I think the openness is kind of the, the biggest uh, uh, kind of uh, encouragement I would give um, and to to you know, take your time, although you want to get things done, mm -hmm. but to understand the whole setting, I think that's the most important. So yeah. that's what I would say to somebody else. Amazing. Yeah. Now we're here at the Norway Fintech Festival, yes. second year running, an second amazing time. event, <laughs> buzzing with people. You can see the excitement. You can see yes. like how many interactions <laughs> have been happening around. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a really great place to be. Uh, in your view, how, how does this event and, uh, contribute to the overall ecosystem in Norway and in the Nordics? So like you said, it's the second time around. So it's pretty new for both us and the participants. So we're learning by, by doing, I guess. Um, but I think what we've managed here is to collect a, a good kind of bunch of different people. It's not necessarily just the top leaders and the CEOs, but also the people working with the, the nitty gritty, right, in, right. The, in the companies and different kind of profiles. Um, people ask me, like, who is the target audience? And I find it so difficult to say because there's so much to choose from, right? And that's what we're trying to do, making kind of an, a festival that you can pick and choose from if you're working with, uh, you know, if you're a, a developer or if you're working with UX, for example, there will be something here for you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what we're trying to achieve with Norway Fintech Festival and kind of show the hidden talent that is in Norway, but also learn from outside. So that's kind of what we're hoping to achieve. And what I've heard so far is that we're we're managing to do that. <laughs> uh, and I would confirm that as well. <laughs> Great. That's amazing. Okay, now, uh, just uh, just last one last question. Yeah. Uh, we're here now almost at the end of the second day of, uh, mm. of the Norwegian Music Festival. Yes. What's been your key takeaway from this year's festival? The fact that, well, I think for me, it's to see the incumbents and startups actually being at the same place mm -hmm. and being able to meet the people you actually want to meet. Um, like I was saying, right, many of them are of the startups don't need to necessarily wait months to get a meeting with somebody. You're here, you can meet them, have a coffee, maybe go, go to the concert. You're, you're enjoying a concert with somebody you probably want to partner with, right? That's just, that's kind of my takeaway from this experience that what I've heard as well, that people are going home now with, of course, new ideas, they're being inspired, but the kind of uh, um, connection, I guess, between the different people has been my experience like that's been what i will go home with i guess right people have managed to make some new dates i guess or business dates and um, are following up already so that's uh, really really cool to see <laughs> well rea congratulations thank you it's been a fantastic event and Thanks we can't so much. wait to be here again next year and see what's how the ecosystem continues to develop looking forward to seeing you again likewise thank you very much thank you <laughs>